Alright, so today we are going to cover something that I love. It's called the Enderton Front Squat Complex, named after Jared Enderton, created by Jared Enderton. He's a phenomenal Olympic weightlifter. He's super strong. He knows his stuff. So the reason I love this complex is a lot of times in our clean, we'll have three scenarios that can happen if we don't hit a perfect lift, which hitting a perfect lift is one scenario. But the first scenario is where you catch it a little bit out of position and you get stuck in the bottom. So you've lost all the momentum and you're just down there and you have to figure out how to rebrace and drive out of the hole. So that's kind of like our pause squat. Then there's the double bounce. It's like you catch and you start to drive up and you just realize you don't have maybe all the juice in your legs. So you come back down in the bounce and then use that momentum to get out of the hole. So the double bounce and the clean, which you'll see Olympic weightlifters do. And then the third scenario is catching it perfectly. So just timing that bounce right out of the bottom. So today I'm gonna put all three of those scenarios into one front squat complex known as the Enderton Complex to help build my legs and get me ready and comfortable with some time under tension on the barbell for any scenario that could happen in my clean. So this is one of the stretches I went over in my last stretching video. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely check it out for wrist pain and shoulder. So I'm gonna go into a front squat. So I wanna make sure that my front rack is ready to go, that everything is loose so I can drive my elbows high and create a nice good shelf across my body. So right now I'm holding one minute per side, just kind of breathing, trying to let my triceps open so I'm ready when I get to the barbell. So in a front squat or clean, a lot of times in front squats you'll hear, it's okay, release it into your fingertips. You can do that if you need to drive your elbows high. However, getting a deeper, fuller grip on the bar and being able to drive our elbows high is gonna be a lot more stable and sturdy in the bottom of the clean. So I like to practice warming up, trying to get the bar as deep into my palm as I possibly can and drive my elbows as high as possible. It's a work in progress for me for sure, but over time my goal is to keep my full hand on the bar even when I hit my cleans and my front squats. So I'm just gonna start with a couple squats with the barbell, a couple tempo, pauses, etc. getting ready for the complex. So we're gonna go through, you'll notice I'm gonna hit, the first rep is gonna be my pause squat. I'm gonna stay in the bottom for three seconds. While I'm in my pause squat, I'm thinking about continuously lifting my elbows up, keeping the bar on my shelf, midline's engaged, driving my knees out to keep my glutes firing. After the three seconds, I'll count to three in my head or watch a clock. I'll focus on pushing the ground away and driving my elbows up as hard as I can to get out of the hole. Then from there, I'm gonna go right into, I call it a double bounce. So I'm gonna go all the way down, drive back up toward my hips, come above my knees, so I'm above parallel, go right back down, drive hard and explode out of the bottom right into a regular front squat. I like to do two of those complexes back to back through about, I don't know, 70% or until it starts to feel heavy. And then I'm gonna go into one complex and build to a heavy for the day. So question I get a lot and you might notice that I'm wearing them. I'm actually wearing seven millimeter knee sleeves. So they make them in different thicknesses. Um, I prefer the sevens because they're a little bit thicker. They're tighter, they keep my knees warm. Do you need them is always a question I get in the gym. Absolutely not, you don't need them. But especially in the winter for me, when it comes to heavy lifting, I like for my joints, I like for my tendons, everything to be super warm. And this helps me warm up faster. And I also like the compression. So it's not something that you're required to have. Um, I definitely think training with little or the least amount of gear for a while is really good. You don't wanna become dependent on your gear. Um, but whenever I'm doing isolated lifts, so back squat, front squat, things like that, where I am gonna be building to heavy, I like to put it on for the extra warmth and the compression. So a lot of people ask, when do we breathe when we lift? Because we need to make sure we're staying tight. So you'll notice when I walk up to the bar, I always take a breath to get it out of the rack. But as soon as I step back, I fill my lower abdomen. So not just your chest. We need to be driving the air down deep into our ab lower abdomen as much as we can to support our spine. From there, you don't want to take such a breath that you're seeing stars. If you're about to pass out, you took too big of a breath. Just nice and big from there. You're gonna go down and I'm holding the entire time. So you're gonna notice I'm not breathing at all. Until I start to drive through, you'll see me start to push all my air out. So at the top I can reset, okay? So we don't wanna be breathing in and out as we're traveling down or when we're in the bottom. We wanna be holding everything as tight as possible. And then you can start exhaling as we're ascending. So you can retake your breath in at the top and get set again for your next lift. So as you notice, I'm starting to get, I've got maybe one set, maybe two more I'm gonna try for. As I'm getting heavier, you're gonna notice I am dropping my pinky off. I still struggle with front rack mobility, so I don't have, like I was talking about in warm up, 
I like to warm up as long as I can, trying to keep the bar as deep into my palm. But as it starts to get heavier, I rely on my shoulders holding the barbell and just stabilizing it with my arms, continuing to drive my elbows up as high as I can. So some, there's always something to work on. Um, this is a big one for me. So, but it has improved since I started CrossFit, so I'm at least happy with that. Celebrate the small wins. So today I set my baseline for where I'm at currently. I actually think that was maybe one of the heaviest Enderton complexes that I've done. So I ended at about 88% of my one rep max. So I think if you do this complex and you wanna build, it's gonna be really great for training your clean because we're gonna have that bar on our shoulder for multiple reps at a time. Time under tension is gonna make us stronger as well as training those positions. So the pause for me doesn't tend to be as bad as the double bounce. And then I like to go into the regular squat. So I think just building up to a heavy, see where you're at, and then we're gonna back it back down and I'm gonna hit a couple weeks of just training this. So I'll back down to about my 70%, go five sets of two complexes back to back, somewhere around 70-ish percent, and then keep building on that. And then I'll retest here in a couple weeks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this takes your clean to a whole new level. I really think it's going to, it's worked really well for me. So I think strength days are really fun. Uh, they definitely beat you down in a whole different way than conditioning. My body handles aerobic conditioning so much better than strength. It just depends on the person and the muscle fibers and the tissues that you have. Some people handle strength much better than the pure aerobic conditioning. It's just my background is endurance, so I like that better. But I think it's really important to make sure also after hitting a heavy lift, your adrenaline is up. You're probably feeling amped. Um, you just might not feel as much if you go straight into a workout. So if something happens, you might not notice it just because of your adrenaline. So when you get home later that night, you'd be like, wow, that really hurts. I don't remember when I did that. And that could be why. So I think it's super important. Spend five to 10 minutes, super easy, flushing out. And then I'm actually gonna hit another stretch right after this, just to make sure my hip flexors open back up. I feel pretty good and I'm ready to continue on with whatever's next on my list.